What's going on, man? Welcome to the number one podcast in Riverside. What's going on today, dude? How are you doing, man? It's, thank you so much for having me here. Of course, dude. Of you know? course. It's uh, for this crazy rainy day that yeah, like yeah. no one wants to leave their house. So I appreciate you making the time to come out here. Yeah, rain, rain in Riverside is a, a rare thing, you know. I, but, uh, I, and, and no one knows what to do right now. <laughs> Like the whole city's shutting down. I have, I have relatives across the country texting saying, are you guys okay? Oh, I know, is it, right? That's like, Isn't it fine. crazy? Like the news are like, it's like all this craziness. And they're like, three people died. Or like in the whole state of California, yeah. three people died. Okay, cool. Like yeah. like Chicago's yeah. like, that's every hour. Or we but, had the hurricane this we had the hurricane this summer, that that hurricane. That was supposed you know? to be like the worst weather of all time. I was like, this was nothing. Well, and I, I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. That that hurricane is that, that what we had here was nothing compared to what we what we see 100%, there. You know? So dude, this is like this is nothing. If you don't if you've never left California, <laughs> you don't know what rain is. Like I used to I used to work in New Orleans mm -hmm. actually. Really? Uh for years, yeah, for baseball. Uh -huh. And like five o'clock every day. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. Boom, downpour. And so it's sunny and raining sometimes and, too. And then, and then we know? get the game in every mm -hmm. night. Like yep. I was like, this is every day. I know. I don't know how they. <clears throat> I don't know how they do it. I literally don't. I hate the South. It's so humid and hot, and the weather sucks. Like. That's what I, would, I would never move back there. No, you know, my whole family's still there. Uh, big family, but I. I go and visit. A you go to the bit, French Quarter, hang out. Yeah, I mean the thing is, you know, when you're from there, yeah, you don't, you don't go really there. do the touristy yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I kind of look at it similar to um, here. You know, if you're from Riverside, odds are you're not gonna you don't, go to the you don't stay at the mission. Yeah, stay at the mission or Festival of Lights every yep. single year necessarily. But uh, but when I bring some friends there and stuff, I've never been before. They want to do it. Yeah, I got to yeah. do the whole tour guide yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know? it's like uh, my cousin lives in Vegas and she actually works on the Strip. She runs. She's a GM yeah. in a restaurant. She'll never go to the Strip other than work. Yeah, she's like, I'm not like you guys can go. I'm not gonna go. Like I live here, that's not what I do, so. This show is sponsored by Resilient Real Estate Group, powered by eXp. So, you're thinking about buying and selling soon? Yes, we know you probably know a realtor, your mom's best friend's cousin's neighbor, who puts her face on the local shopping cart, but you know what? Our friends at Resilient Real Estate Group have helped hundreds of thousands of people sell houses over the years, and they definitely know what they're doing based on their five-star review on Google and Zillow. So, it doesn't matter if you're looking to buy a million dollar house or a fixer-upper, make sure the next time you're thinking about buying and selling real estate, you give our friends a call over at Resilient Real Estate Group. And now we're back to the show. Philip, why don't you tell everyone who you are, man? Yeah, so Philip Falcone, running for City Council in Riverside in Ward 1. It's We're in the heart of Ward 1 right yeah. now, actually. It's mm -hmm. uh, downtown, the Wood Streets, the north side, the east side. So four pretty big neighborhoods. Um, I mentioned I was from New Orleans. That's where my that's where I was born. That's where my family's from. Uh, family relocated to Riverside in 2005 after Hurricane Katrina. That's what I heard. So, 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 spe so speaking of, you know, that was like, Hurricane Hillary that we had here. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. You're like, this is nothing. I know. That's why I'm like, the, the, just like, come talk to me about hurricanes if you want to hear about that. But um, yeah. But my, So my, what, what, like, why there to here? Yeah. You know, uh, so I had one, we were, fa my, my family was fortunate that we had a relative to fall back on, you know, okay. because we lost everything in the hurricane. Mm -hmm. So uh, kind of the way that it works, at least uh, there when you, have, you lived there before, so you probably know about this, but you know, you evacuate, you anticipate being gone for like five days, the hurricane comes through. You come back. You know, you come back yeah. and there's some damage usually, but you kind of, you make do. Uh, Hurricane Katrina was strong and fast uh, and didn't give people a whole lot of time to prepare for what was coming. Uh, so when it, when it, Finally, when news finally broke that it was coming, it was gonna be pretty significant. People just had enough time really to get their stuff and go. And, and that's what my family did. So you pack five days with the clothes, you leave. Uh, we evacuated to Houston, Texas. And then when saw how bad it was, uh, we ended up losing everything. We had four feet of water in our house. Uh, and that's just enough to, you know, destroy yeah. everything and you have people have to think that you know this is like this is nasty <laughs> sewer water oh, yeah, it's, I mean, disgusting. This, it's it's bad so uh so destroyed everything and uh, i was eight years old at the time and my parents decided that for me and my two sisters i'm one of three kids that they didn't want to move back and you know every 10 years you have another major hurricane that you in many cases lose everything and rebuild so we had one uncle a relative that lived out here my my mom's brother lived in in riverside and he had moved out here 10 years prior from new orleans Never knew what ended up bringing him out. I knew he wanted to go to California and leave New Orleans, but I don't know how he settled on Riverside. It's a question I still need to ask him. But we moved in with him, and uh, the people of Riverside just wrapped their arms around my family and gave so much to us in our time of great need. They gave, I mean, clothing, household yeah. items, gift cards. I remember, like, coming home from school I'm, uh, when I was in the sec second grade and coming home from school back then and like every day there was boxes of stuff that people were donating to my family mm -hmm. and it, that still sticks with me. I mean, that really is like a driver for me yeah. um, in terms of what this community gave to my family. 
um, but 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 came to Riverside because of a, of a family member that lived yeah. here already. People don't understand how like those like when I was there in two thousand in yeah. New Orleans in twelve thirteen no. 13, 14, 15, like people are still recovering from it. Oh, yeah. Like there was neighborhoods still that mm-hmm. like never recovered mm-hmm. because it, like they didn't have the money or whatever. Yeah. Like, dude, some of those floods, they just ruin towns. When I tell people, I mean, of course, I'm a little biased, but I think this is the most significant natural disaster in modern U.S. history. I mean, and even just for people that uh, I'm not going to go, not going to geek out on you on these, all yeah. these infrastructure things. I'm an, I'm an infrastructure guy. So even when thinking about just the way that the infrastructure of the city Every, everything just really failed. The government failed the people, the, the infrastructure failed. Of course, there was just the, the weather aspect of it. Uh, it really it really messes up people. And now here we are almost 20 years later and still. It's still not, some mm-hmm. people have still never recovered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you and the crazy part is like, is what people don't understand is like, if you didn't have that family member or yeah. then it's like, you're behind the eight ball for yeah. years. And that's what I'm saying, we were, we were lucky, yeah. you know? Uh, my, my family was lucky that we had someone to fall back on, but there were so many families who they had absolutely nothing. I mean, the Superdome became yeah, a homeless house. shelter. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It was a homeless shelter for, for, for months, I mean, after the hurricane. So we were fortunate where we didn't have to rely on that, you know? Um, so so that, that I always say is kind of what, what drives me. I mean, that's what gets me out of bed each morning. The people of Riverside gave so much to my family, and how do I repay this? And so from that time, I, mean, I went to Riverside schools, RCC, UCR, CBU. I said, I hit them all except La Sierra. <laughs> um, and, and then went to work for Rusty Bailey, the previous mayor, Patricia Locke Dawson, the current mayor, uh, served on the city's cultural heritage board. All that because it's like, how do you repay this yeah. now? This, yeah. this, this city gave so much to you, as this is a common story, of course, for many people that Riverside gives this sense of community. How do you repay that? Yeah. And for me, it's through public service. So what made you, what were you doing with Rusty back in the day? Yeah, so, uh, well, actually, a little background story there. I was at, um, uh, I was in high school prepared to go away to school in Las Vegas, of all places. We mentioned that, yeah, yeah. that earlier. And... Um, then I ended up meeting Rusty's chief of staff at the time, and uh, long story short there, ended up getting an internship that turned into a job after, but kind of threw away all of what I wasn't going to way to school for. I wasn't going, like I said, Las Vegas. Threw all that away. I had a, uh, a scholarship to study uh, linguistics. I wanted to be a high school Spanish teacher, okay. of all things. I mean, t- two totally different things from where I am now, but... Uh, and then ended up going, so threw all that away to stay local, to work for Rusty, and then went to RCC and transferred to UCR. But um, what I ended up doing was there's an international relations officer in the mayor's office who oversees uh, the city's uh, nine different sister cities around mm-hmm. the globe. I was helping with that. International relations are not really my specialty or strong suit, but that's where I, that's where I started and really cut my teeth on learning uh, in that space and, and working for Rusty. and built my love for politics and local government and Riverside. So it was a fun time. Rusty's a great guy. Oh, it was great. Yeah. I somehow, I don't know, you know, one day I got like connected with him to have lunch with him. I don't even know why. Like he's like, yeah, come out, have lunch with Uh me. It was actually kind of awkward. It was the day he sued Riverside. Well, there's that. It was that day. But he won. He won his lawsuit. It was (laughs) was that day. I remember like walking over being like, I walked into his office. I was like, do you still want to have lunch? He's like, yeah, sure. sure, What does it matter? Like, I mean, we're going to keep working. I I was, I was working for him at that time. I remember, I remember those days. I mean, I think back to really a lot of kind of the more pivotal moments in recent Riverside history. And I think, gosh, you know, I was, I remember these days. Uh, You don't remember every day, of course, but you remember some of these, these monumental ones. And I was, I was working for Rusty at that time. And, uh, yeah, it was a wild time, but he did end up winning his lawsuit. So well, the thing that. is crazy about Riverside is like it's so big, and like mm-hmm. a lot of people didn't ever even know about it. Yeah. Like if you don't pay attention to what's going on in politics, mm-hmm. like you have no idea mm-hmm. anything that's going on. Because like I grew up in Orangecrest, I lived here my whole life, yeah. and like my parents never were involved in the politics mm-hmm. and any of the things. Like they, didn't, I mean, I have no idea what was going on. Yeah. I never even came downtown when I lived in Orangecrest. Like we I, stayed I up there. I hear a lot of that. I hear a lot of that. You know, and, and actually, what's funny is I talked to you know my parents, of course, who were who were born and raised in New Orleans, and they they just compare like the way that city government is there versus here. Mm-hmm. And you know, here in in Riverside. People are very for the, I mean in different areas it's different but but for the most part at least in Ward One where you have you know all near the seat of government near downtown people are very engaged and very active and they will reach out to their council member and the mayor about everything and my parents say it's just very funny for them to see that because we're of course where where we come from in the south and in, in New Orleans you never would reach out to the council no, the city no, council no, no, the mayor no. for anything you yeah. just there was a pothole you just said oh well too, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh so and I'm not saying that's right or wrong but it's just just different how different areas of this country you know 
operate differently. Well, it's just like what matters to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and sometimes in certain communities, people don't think their voice is heard anyways. Yeah. Maybe in New Orleans, maybe it's the black community also doesn't feel yeah. like they're, they're heard as much as they should be. And it's and a big city. Too. It's I mean, so big. Uh, Riverside is big too. And this is, I think, kind of our uh, the message that is changing in Riverside. I mean, if you were to pick up our city and drop it in any other state, really, in this nation, we would be in the definitely in the top I think we five. have more people than Pittsburgh, right? We're more more Pittsburgh, people than Pittsburgh. More yeah. than St. Louis. Yeah. More than, I mean, Louisville, Kentucky. We're only, because we have LA, San exactly. Diego, Chicago, exactly. like, Orange, like we compete against too many, yeah. too big of cities. I mean, we're larger than 99% of the cities in this, in this country. And so I think that there's that, but that being said, Riverside still really has a small town feel. Mm -hmm. And so it is where people expect their candidate for city council, their council member to be at their front door when election time comes. And I mean, that's what, that's what I'm doing. I'm out knocking on doors seven days a week. Yeah. I mean, because people want to see, and as they should, but they want to see that candidate at their door. And I think that just, it speaks to this small town feel in Riverside. Yeah. Do you feel like ward one's kind of a difficult ward because <laughs> you have three different yeah. types of communities all at once? Like no, nothing but like the east side is yeah. completely different than correct. the wood streets correct and the and the people that live in the wood streets first people that live in the east side yeah. have different needs and wants anyways mm -hmm. like it's that that couldn't be more different yeah you know i was talking to s several people who ron Loveridge in particular ron Loveridge is a is a mentor of mine is someone who represented ward one for you know 15 years then was mayor for almost 20 years Dude, that guy is at um, molino so much <laughs> he he's walks there every well, he day. lives down the street he walks he's there to every day i swear to god um, i've seen him there every yes, day for the last yeah, five years yep uh love ron loveridge but uh he, he told me he said philip i mean before because the east side is a new addition to ward one it was ward two dating back to 1955 it wasn't until 2023 uh where it was moved into ward one through some redistricting efforts so you have an added neighborhood already to a very demanding world. I don't, I don't call Ward One difficult. I do call them demanding, though. Yeah. And uh, and I don't mean that in a, in There's a negative way. There's just a lot going way. on down it's, here. Yeah. You have very. You have. This is. I mean, immense population. A lot going on, as you're saying. You have. You know, RCC in the Wood Streets. Uh, very engaged community. You have downtown, where all, for the most part, the development and the excitement of events are happening. You have the North Side, which has been historically a neglected neighborhood that has so much land and space for development and hope and a future there really and you have the east side which again historically has been neglected mm -hmm. and forgotten and is very established um, community members who rightfully so are frustrated that they've always been overlooked by city hall and in many cases have lost battles to downtown and now they're all together yeah, in yeah. one ward so we all need to be uh, friendly siblings here uh, and all vital but it, it is a, it is a very demanding ward and I, I'm biased but I think it's one of the most demanding in the whole city and I'm prepared for that though. well because like I mean I grew up in Orange Crest like yeah. there's not too much going on up there like which is largely residential it's all residential mm -hmm. up there and then the biggest argument you have right there is now how many warehouses come in yeah I mean yeah. that's really the battle that you're having down here but down here you have you know I will say this I've noticed this because I live in Orange Crest mm -hmm. still and it's crazy I'm noticing because definitely I've worked in downtown for mm -hmm. six, seven years now. So obviously I've seen it in tech of the homeless population yeah. down here. But it's crazy to see that now there are some homeless in really? Orange Crest, which when I was a, I, you know, I lived there for yeah. 20 something years. Like I, when I was a kid, you never saw homeless up there. Mm -hmm. It was like they didn't want to walk up the hill or mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. But now it's like becoming where it's flowing over yeah. to that point. You know what I mean? So obviously that's a big issue that mm -hmm. people have. So what are your thoughts on, on taking advantage or helping out with the homeless yeah. situation? Well, I mean, that, that Adam is the number one thing that as I'm out talking to people that, and, and, and rightfully so, I mean, that's top of mind for so many people because it's so visible as well. I mean, in which I think what you're, what you're alluding to here is we're seeing this expansion of yeah. a homeless crisis that's happening. And it's happening all across our state and our country. But I think f for, for us, what we, have done, I'll talk about what we have done well and what we haven't done well and where we need to work on. I think it's always important to at least identify there's there's always some wins in something. Oh, for so, sure. So where have we done well? I think that if you have someone who's living on the street right now who is receptive to help and wants to get into job training or temporary housing or whatever it may be, we have those programs and we do that well. The challenge there, though, is that population is fairly small. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of folks, where I'm going to get to the, the, the part where we haven't done well, a lot of folks are 
facing some kind of mental health challenge, addiction. And so you can't just simply get them in a job training or get them into housing and expect them to succeed. Mm -hmm. So for those who, who are able to get help right away, we can do that. The city has those services. That will remain. Um, and affordable housing is a part and piece of that. But for the folks who it's not as simple as just a housing or job or something like that, we need more help there. And, and that's, in, that's in the mental health space. So for me, you know, there was three state laws that were changed in 2023 that will allow families and local government uh, really the ability to require people get help. Mm -hmm. and this is a sensitive subject, but I think it's important because the fact is I think it's more humane to require people who are mentally ill or addicted to drugs or both who are living on our streets it's more humane to require that they be in treatment than to let them live and die on the streets. Well, either way, it takes resources. It does. It does. You know, and the sad thing is, I think I think issues with homeless is because homeless leads to crime. Yeah. Then crime affects the people, and mm -hmm. especially in nowadays, like with everything that's been going on the last few years in the economy and inflation, or yeah. whatever. Like, what sucks is when you see someone who, yes, they have a job, and yes, mm -hmm. they have a house, and yes, they have those things, but then some crime is done against them where their car's broken into mm -hmm. and they're still, their laptop's stolen or something. Maybe they don't have the money to go buy those things. And mm -hmm. it's not, you can't do an insurance claim. Mm -hmm. So that person's also taking the hit, you know? Well, yeah, and then yeah. I, th I think too about, uh, you know, if we're speaking just even downtown specific, since we're in downtown yeah. right now, is that you have a lot of business owners, and this is not unique to downtown, it happens across our city, but a lot of business owners who get their windows shattered. Yeah. In. And I mean, I was just talking to uh, a store owner, a T. Elliott, at the corner of, of Main and uh, Sixth. They had a brick thrown through her window. She's been at that corner. Uh, she sells women's clothing, been there for over 20 years. Uh, Brick was thrown through her window. Window shattered. This big expanse That's of expensive. glass and expensive. Yes, big, and they didn't steal anything. And and so we're talking. We're like you know, it's like she she said not completely serious, but she's like, I almost wish they would have stolen something because they just broke the window just to to for, just to break for no it. reason. Yeah. yeah. So um, that we have to acknowledge. I mean, there's there there's a component here where we have to have an enforcement piece as well. Um, and so, for example, encampments, uh, people that are going to be committing these crimes, to the best of our ability as a city, we don't have absolute control, but to the best of our ability as a city, we need to enforce, you know, the laws that are on the books. Well, I think that's what helped out when they got rid of the, you know, they did really broke down people on, in the river bottom. Well, know? yeah, because what I always say, it's not, you're looking at a, a safety issue across the board. It is not safe for someone to live in the river well, bottom. Well, look right now. Yeah, well, I know. I mean, so, they were saving yeah. people yesterday. Yes, yeah, in this, in this rain. I yeah. Mean, so it's not safe for them. Uh, it's not safe for the, the, the homeowners that live up against the river who are threatened by fire. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it's also, I'm an environmental person, too. I'm, I'm a conservationist by nature. It, it messes not, with everything down there. It's not safe there, for yeah. the environment. Yeah. So I, I tell people, you know, if you are looking at it from a humane approach, from an environmental approach, you wouldn't want people living in the river bottom either. Mm -hmm. You know, so yes, they, 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 we have an anti-encamping ordinance that they've enforced there. The challenge is in many cases, and it, it, it people are now it to flows onto the streets, yeah. and then it's like, what do we do with them there? Mm -hmm. You know, and I just, it's not a problem that can be solved overnight either. Well, and I'm not here to tell you as as one council member, no, exactly. I would have the ability exactly. to say, and, yeah. I, and that's why I always try to, you know, we need to, as as voters and as Riversiders, manage our expectations, knowing that if anyone comes before you and says, as a candidate or even as a council member, that they alone have the solution, they don't. They're lying yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You know, it's we we all have a role to play in this but no one person at least in my view even even in maybe riverside i mean yeah. the state of california really is the there's, is a, a, big there's a lot that needs to change at the state of california because um you know it, it a lot of laws that were probably passed with well and with good intentions mm -hmm. are now coming to a head yeah. i mean we're seeing a generational impact of the closing of mental health institutions in the state of california way back decades ago that's coming to a head now. Yeah. And people say, oh, well, that happened you know, in the 60s and 70s. Why are you still talking about that? We're talking about it because it's now coming to a head. Mm -hmm. And that shows you that laws and legislation have generational impacts. Well, I, you know, I don't know if people realize this. Actually, it's crazy because I'm in housing, right? Sell real estate. Yeah. It's like we, when the market crashed in 08, the big reason why we crashed is because we didn't have people buying houses, mm -hmm. whatever. Right now. If you would go back 33 years as the average person that buy the first house, that year there was a decrease in people having babies. Well, mm -hmm. what came out the year? It was that like, oh, people could have abortions. Mm -hmm. And so something like that lowered the amount of people in this world that much, which then took away the, the 
the buying pool that would be buying mm -hmm. their first house in that moment. Yeah. And so we lost it. Like, and it's like track. It's like it's like what happened then is going to affect now. Mm -hmm. It's not that that it's not. There's always a cause and effect of everything. Well, and I always and people, sometimes we don't even know what the effect is yet. Yeah. Oh, of course. I mean, uh, there very well may be decisions that are we happening now, now thirty years. That we just won't yeah. know. And, and and two things on that point. One is I think that it shows that you know these things take time to, to really come into effect. But number two, you know, I talk about the importance of getting the younger generation involved in politics, and that's because we are gonna be the ones that are gonna be growing yeah. old into, mm -hmm. these, into these decisions. So the decisions that are happening now by folks with all due respect to folks that they, have been in government for 30 uh, years or whatever, you know, they're not gonna be in government the, for the next 30 years. Their effects don't cause. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I gotta keep it tight. Give me my bag, my bag, my bag, my bag, got my eyes on the price. Mm. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I gotta keep it tight. Give me my bag, my bag, my bag, my bag, got my eyes on the price. Mm. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I gotta keep it tight. Give me the bass, give me the beat, give me my bag, this right. Yeah. That that's something I think in, if you want to talk about government throughout the United States like it, it they're too old. They our congress members, our senators are just too old. I mean shoot, what was it Baba Boxer? Was that her name? Senator well, Diane Feinstein. D Diane Feinstein. Was, Feinstein. Was, yeah, from yeah, 1992 Feinstein. until yeah, I mean, she died. she she didn't even know what was going on and she's still technically a senator. Like, well, you know what I, I mean? What like, I look at it as is that well, first of all, I'm in favor of term limits at every level of government. I think that be. you should not be like I'm saying I'm not going to be on this I'm not going to be on the city council longer than two terms. Yeah. Do you, even even being a young person, two terms and then move along because even if you're young, there's benefits to getting new people in there. So I'm in favor of term limits across the board for the most part. I think two terms, everything. Congress, it's different because it's a two-year term. So it if should, you're only there you should for bump two, it to four, and then do and two just terms, make two. and then yeah. be done. The the challenge federally is that the way that our system is, and now it's like Phillips government class. Yeah, that's what it's becoming. But the way that our system is is that we, as a as a federal government, reward seniority. Hundred percent. So you know, in the instance of of Diane Feinstein, the longer she stayed, the more important uh, the roles more that she got she had, on and committees, she, exactly. and that then usually benefits the state you represent. Hundred percent. So they can say to their voters, you know, keep electing me because the longer more I'm pull. here, yeah. I can help you more. And people have different mixed emotions on that, you know, but but that on paper is how our government is structured. And so if we were to stop incentivizing seniority, yeah. we, we would see, I think, people not staying as long. I mean, well, I mean, we don't even need to talk about the back end, back end deals that happen too. <laughs> well, there's there's all that. I'm just I'm just trying to stay purely based on what's I mean, on what's on paper. I mean, I mean, city council has you, no control on that. Yeah, like hundred percent. I don't I don't think you're gonna become a multimillionaire being <laughs> Ward One. No, and that's what people people say. You know that I'm just in this for money or whatever. Actually, I, you know, I was working for Patricia Lock Dawson. Uh, I quit that job to run for city council. I mean, I teach at CBU as well, but uh, this city council job is gonna be a fifty percent pay cut for me. So this yeah. is I guarantee you. That was I'm not making. <laughs> rich off this I job remember, so when i said went to lunch with rusty bailey i yeah. paid for lunch and he goes why are you paying for lunch i'm like i, <laughs> I know you make 87 grand a year so like i feel and, guilty and that, and that and that that's the person that makes the most money i was like uh, of yeah, exactly i was officials. like i feel guilty yeah, <laughs> i was like I don't worry i got you on lunch dude like and, and it's because for, for city council you know we uh uh as, as a city have approved that city council being a part-time job. Now I say it's part-time It's part -time pay, full-time full -time work, 100%. especially in Ward 1. I mean, I'm prepared to commit at least 70 hours a week to this job. When I was working for Patricia, I was physically in the office seven days a week. Well, you were everywhere. I was easily putting yeah, yeah. 70 hours. So, but but for me, I enjoy that though. Yeah, it yeah. genuinely brings it's me different. joy. Yeah. So that's that's okay. But what I'm saying is that you know this this city council role will require that too. But yet the pay is not commensurate 100%. with that. Uh, but also, I'm going into this making that decision. Do you think we need to raise how much government employees work, or uh, sorry, employee, how much government employers make, and then we would take more people out of the private or the public sector, private sector, and bring them into the public? I think it depends on what you're talking about. So for, for certain employees, I mean, if, if you're a non-political employee, for the most part, you get paid pretty well, you know, so you have, you get good pay, you have good benefits, and, and there's always things that can be, that can be worked yeah. on in that space. 
Um, but for the elected officials, uh, it, is, it is a bit of a challenge. I think the general public doesn't understand exactly uh, how much pay an elected official is getting because they look at people like in Congress. And, and they think you're making tons of money. Yes, yes but, but I, I tell people to you know suspend that thought process of what you see at the federal level, even at the state level, and local is just different. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I would be in favor of, and I, you know, the Rain Cross Gazette did an article on this and I shared my opinion on this. I would be in favor of city council and mayor getting a raise because not, not you know, I'm not saying, you know, get them six figures. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying though is make it where someone could actually live off of this job because in a city of this size, this job, it's a full, I mean, it deserves I mean to be just full think time. about our mayor. Yeah. Like you're running a major city. Mm -hmm. You should, you know, I know it's not LA or whatever, but yeah. it's like you're bigger than so many well, cities. Yeah, like yeah. I was saying earlier, yeah. you know, and, and, and even in California, the 12th largest city in California. So when you look at all of our cities that are even, you know, even if we were to look at, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, the, the ones that are immediately around us, you're talking about Anaheim, Irvine, um, Bakersfield, uh, um, Stockton, these ones that they are their city councils and their mayors are in a totally different mm -hmm. bracket than we are. And um, and so, I mean, that's not really a platform issue for me, but it is something yeah. that I do think about. And if people were to ask me, I'm honest with them and say, city council in this town deserves to be full time. Yeah. Adrian, could you uh, put my phone on vibrate, please? Thanks. Uh, I definitely think if we need to increase money in government throughout that and then take money out of government, just give everyone more money, then they won't take money from other people. No money for, everyone gets a flat fee for out for for running so you're like hey i'm yeah. gonna run cool you get a limit of thirty thousand dollars you cannot take any money from anyone oh you're Best saying of, donation wise yeah, yeah no donation money no yeah. nothing yeah pay oh, you gosh, more wish. take out donation money and then and then it would be like that like yeah. i think you would i would think it would we would i think our policies would be different well you know there's a lot of countries in europe that do that but it's really has i think that america's really wary of that because that is a form of socialism 100%. we're talking about yeah um and, and and i and i and i don't i don't support uh socialism i, I always say you know we, capitalism is what our country is founded on yeah. but we also need to realize that you know with capitalism people will always find loopholes to take to advantage of money. other people yeah so it's capitalism but also being mindful of those loopholes and trying to make the system as fair as it can being in a capitalistic society but there are i mean countries in europe who have successfully done this and I have a few friends that are like from France or even up in Canada too that say, you know, you guys campaign for months. Even taking even taking the, the donation yeah. piece out of it, just the campaigning, the stumping for I mean, eighteen months. I I've actually had a little bit of a shorter campaign in this case. I, I launched in October of twenty twenty three and the election is of March five of twenty four. That's short compared to other ones. When I was running Patricia Lock Dawson's campaign uh, in in 2020, that election was over 18 months long. That that, that campaign, I should say, and in places like Canada, you can only campaign for 30 days, and that's that's it. what I'm saying. Like because because then if you're trying to go re-election, yeah, how much time are you going to cut into when you should it's be true. doing some work that you're trying to just take the time to get re-elected, mm -hmm. and then you know then every politician goes like, you yeah. need to vote me back in so I can get all the things I said I was going to get done. That requires though a really uh, well-informed and engaged voter base because if you only have 30 days to get the information, you need, you need to pay attention. You need to be paying attention. Which then maybe we all would pay more attention. I, I wish I wish our society would. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I mean, I, I'm and, still knocking on doors right now. I mean, we're, we are in, ballots are, are being mailed out to voters right now. And people still and don't know. people are like, there's an election coming up. And I understand that our lives are busy. I get it. But the fact is, I always say this city council role in particular is so foundational to your quality of life. You really need to be engaged on this. Well, the issue is you can't complain if you don't pay attention. There's that too. So if you don't if you don't want to take the time to know what's going on, then you can't complain how mm -hmm. the how the turnout is. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just is what it is. Yeah. yeah. And then the hard part with nowadays is like who you listen to online. Mm -hmm. Then that's how you it's skewed, and then it's like more people need to listen to more people. I, I, people don't listen to enough options out well, there. Well, and and our and over the last several years, our, our way of thinking has become so polarized in terms of everything's either Democrat or Republican. Yeah. And I always urge people that, you know, you should be at, at the, you know, we don't run as a Democrat or Republican at the city council level. Um, it's, it's nonpartisan, meaning that on the ballot, it's not gonna say R or D or I or whatever mm -hmm. behind someone's name. Uh, and I think what's important is that you have support across that political gamut. So for me, you know, I have, right, left, center, people that have endorsed me, I think that shows that 
you know, I'm not focused on just being a, you know, Democratic council member or a Republican Well, the hard part, member. it locks you into so much of your ideas mm -hmm. that maybe I'm both. You know what I mean? Like when, you and could, you, and most, I would say most people are, I would say most people are both. The majority of this country people is, is both. but that's not, th those are not the loud ones. But those aren't the thing that gets you advertisement. That's it's true. not the thing that's that gets true. you views. And that's the problem nowadays is that everything is met for views. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, I have, I have, I have friends that are on all sides of the political spectrum and my friends who are more conservative. They say, Philip, you know, the problem with you is you're just too liberal. Then I have liberal friends that say, <laughs> Philip, the problem with you is you're just too conservative. And I want to get them in the same room and say, my liberal friends need to tell my conservative friends yeah. this and vice versa. And really for me, I mean, I, I always say, I feel like I'm right in the center. I, on fiscal issues, I lean a little more uh, to the right in terms of, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm in favor of capitalism yeah. and all of that. On social issues, I'm a little more to the left. I think that I don't want the government involved in a lot of these social topics in terms of, uh, you, know, you know, when it comes to discrimination, all these different things that, you know, we sh the, the government should be, I think, more accepting and loving of other people. That's also, there's a religious aspect there too. You know, I come from a, I, I teach at CBU, I'm a Catholic. Yeah. I believe that, you know, a, as people who are religious, that we should love everyone and welcome everyone. And so you have these two, what shouldn't be opposing political ideologies, but in today's day and age, unfortunately, they kind of have become that way. Um, but I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm in the center. Yeah. But of course, like I said, people that are on one side will say Well, because say one they only thing. want to listen to the things that you don't agree with them well, on. Yeah. And then that thing is like, when most of the time, I always say to you, I'm like, do you even care? You don't even care. It doesn't affect your well, life. Well, it's about the tribe. You, you, it's don't, about even, what, you don't yeah. even care. Yeah. You don't even know what's really going on. Like, What's well, the sound bite? You know, when I tell people, I, I can't give you uh, a sound bite that's going to, you know, uh, be, be music to your ears necessarily because I don't speak in terms of, th I don't speak like that. So I tell people, instead of asking me, are you Democrat or Republican, ask me about a specific issue, I'll tell you my stance yeah. and you tell me what you think I am. Yeah. You know, but really though, locally, I really feel like these things shouldn't be about that. I'm talking about well, because it's the all, roads, the it's parks. All about, it, it, exactly, it's not a big enough scale. It's like, we're here to help the people of Riverside. Mm -hmm. Who cares if you're, if you think I'm gonna be able to help you better than the other guy, and I'm gonna get more done, and my track record shows I can get stuff done, then that's what you should care about. Well, and that's really, Adam, what, I, what I'm pushing for. I mean, that's what I'm advocating, or that's what I'm running on, is that, you know, we're in, I'm in a crowded race of five candidates, but I'm proud to be the only candidate who has any experience in government, and I don't see that as a negative thing. No. You know, a lot of detractors well, because will, you will gotta, say- Because you know how the game is played. You, well, you, and, you and, just know, and you know the people. Well, and I tell people too, it's for me, you know, it's not like I've been in government for 30 years. So it's like, they don't, they say, oh, you're part of the swamp, all this stuff. Come they on don't now. even know what the swamp well, is. Oh, come on now. Listen. I've been, I've been, I've worked for city. I've worked uh, for Rusty and Patricia. It's been in total almost a decade. It's been eight years. So don't give me the whole swamp. You like, know, you're, like you're the slogan. speaker of the house I know, over here. It's like, so it's just, <laughs> but what I look at that as that eight years for me, at least has given me. Um, enough time to know how things get done at City Hall, but also I've not been there so long where I'm so entrenched, yeah. where I don't ever wanna change anything or evolve. I know where the gaps are. Mm -hmm. I also know how things get done. And so I'm thinking I'm, I'm prepared to blend those two I think things. the other thing people don't process is like, they, like you said, they only look at the governor, they look at Congress, presidents, all those people. Because right? that's what's on, that's because what's on the news. Because it's all they see. And it's like, those people are so rich, or they come from, so, like Gavin Newsom got popped the other day because he was at a store and someone stole. Yeah. And they were like, oh, why did you not stop him? Like, the governor. And they didn't realize he was the governor. That's pretty bad, too. They don't even know who the governor is. Well, I don't know if I buy all that. But <laughs> exactly. So anyways, but it's like, that guy, no, I, I, what is he even doing at the store? Like, I'm shocked that he even went to the store. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the issue. It's like, you're still living, you're living in the ward that, well, that you, well, you're well, in. What's well, funny to me is someone said, um, t uh, two, two quick stories I have on this. One is when I'm knocking on someone's door, they, and, and I'm, when I'm knocking on doors, I'm not, I'm not dressed like this. Yeah. I'm not wearing a suit knocking at someone's door. I'm wearing casual clothes. You know, I have my campaign shirts, which is a long sleeve t-shirt or, or a sweatshirt, jeans, and Converse. That's what I'm using to knock on doors. And so I knock on their door, I hand them the, the, my little flyer that has a picture of me yeah. in a suit on it, and they say, wait, this is you? And I say, yes. I'm like, well, you look so casual. Why are you not? Why are you knocking on my door? Uh, you, why aren't you? And why aren't you not? You know, in a suit or something. I say, well, first of all, I'm not going to be knocking on doors uh, on a Saturday in a suit and tie. You're going to think I'm trying to sell you an encyclopedia or a Bible or something. <laughs> They're like, but, where's your bike? At? <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> but but no. I mean, this is this is my neighborhood. And number one, if you are a candidate who's who's worth anything, you should be out there yourself knocking on doors. So I think that people don't expect me to be out there, which I am. The second thing is. 
I put my cell phone number on everything. We sent out mailers, uh, you know, the, our first mailer uh, a few days ago. It went out to almost 10,000 people. My cell phone number, my personal cell phone number is on all of that. And my, uh, my friend that was helping with the mail said, do you want to do that? Do you want to put your phone number on there? I said, I put my phone number on everything. People should be able to get a hold of me. So some, so I got a phone call the other day. I was uh, driving back from CBU from teaching and I answered it. I, it was a 951 number. I didn't know who it was. Yeah. So I answered and I said, you know, this is Philip. And there was a, there was a pause there. And I'm like, hello, whatever. Said, oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought this was like a, uh, a uh, like a voice, uh, not a voicemail, but you know, like, like yeah, a yeah, robot yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. Like, like a, a recording of yeah, you. Yeah. I said, no, and they said, oh, or I thought it was gonna go to a, a, an office. I said, no, there is no office. <laughs> it's it's me. me, my campaign manager. <laughs> um, and, and I answer all that, because it goes straight to my phone. That, to me, is the type of stuff that is important. I'm just, I'm out walking on the main street. I live yeah. downtown, I'm out walking on the main street mall every day like anyone else, you know. Uh, it's just, this is city council. This is not, this is not to it's that level where. Exactly. You know, I should I should be attainable. I am attainable. I am accessible. So we've obviously hit the homeless issue, but that's yeah. an issue everywhere in California. I don't, and, and not even just California. It's an oh, issue. Yeah, it's, it's an issue yeah. in everywhere, and I think that that's a problem that hopefully sooner or later people will actually take a real grasp at it because it just the the thing that it just brings down. It's hard for me too, right? Yeah. Because like in my space, like people like. Yeah. Oh, you want to? You care about homeless? Like, oh, it's like no. I just I'm 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 over here just like they don't want to be. No one. I always say this. No one woke up one day and being like, I want to be homeless, or no one woke up one day and like, I want to be an addict, like, or have mental issues. No one does that. Mm -hmm. Like, no one woke up as a kid and been like, hey, I want to be an addict one day and mm -hmm. live on the street. Like, yeah. it doesn't. I don't think anyone's ever said that. So it's like, those are the things that we should be helping the people that are in a place where they need the help. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing. If they want the help, we need to help them. And that's the truth. Well, the want the help is important. And I also, I, I go back to the whole aspect of, you know, my passion with being mental health. And, and, but do, and, but do, they, do they even know they need the help? Well, that's so the that, question. That's actually what was changing one of the laws. And yeah. this is something I was very active with, with when I was in the mayor's office. We had a bipartisan forum. We had four, a 14 member committee. We had seven, Demo, you know, seven conservative yeah. folks, seven liberal liberal folks. We all came together and we said, exactly. you know, we see the world very differently, mm -hmm. but how can and I, and I was just I was on staff, so I wasn't representing any one side, but I was on staff for for the mayor. And it's you know where can we agree? And they agreed that you know some folks and it was defined in the in the state law as if you lack the capacity to make that decision. Some people. Which we do with elderly people. So what's the difference? So so state laws were changed to, to do that now. That was one of three state laws that were changed in 2023 that now it redefines what it means to be gravely disabled mm -hmm. uh, to help get people the help that they need, you know? Yeah. Do you, what are other things that you're looking yeah. forward to that hopefully you can move the needle forward mm -hmm. in, in downtown, obviously, homeless that's let's check that's, yeah that's yeah. one and, and that's and that's the main one i always there's, there's three there's three main there's three main but i think if you here. solve that problem it helps a lot of issues yes or it brings I the say, value well, I the businesses say, and everything we, just make a 10 or 20 percent impact yeah that, we will feel that 100 you, know, you know i'm not saying that we can that we can that like i said we're not going to solve it 100 percent yeah we're not going to solve it 95 percent, 90 percent. but if you can make a 10 or 20 percent impact we will see that difference. Yeah. And I think that's that's where we start there. Uh, but the other things, I mean, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm an infrastructure nerd. I love roads. I mean, people always say roads and bridges. We don't really have any bridges in Riverside. Um, and, and freeway bridges are something different. That's not that's not city, that's state. Yeah. Uh, but roads, sidewalks, parks, tree trimming, electrical, sewer, water, all these things that they're not glamorous. And a lot of people, you don't even think about them because a lot of it you don't see. You don't see the yeah. sewer lines you don't see the electrical the water but when they don't work well like right now we're gonna find some problems <laughs> our storm drains out storm drains out here are not always working the best and when they don't work we know you you, you see it and so for me uh, uh, just being passionate about infrastructure is big, but also uh, coming from a place where infrastructure really uh, is what uh, you know, the, yeah, fail, failed. It yeah. failed. It failed in Hurricane Katrina, and so there's, that's an important part of my life story. But also, we as a city, as a city council, have complete control over this. And what I mean by that is our roads, if they are in bad shape, it is squarely on the fault of the city council. And that's because they have absolute control over that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying, you know, in, in my first term here, we wanna get our roads to a place that is a much better where they are now, and we can quantify that. So our roads are scored, across California, roads are scored from zero to 100, zero being the worst, 100 being the best. Riverside is scored at a 58. So we have a failing score. You know, I, I, I teach at CBU, I say, you don't have to be a, a teacher or a professor to know that 
it's a, that's a failing <laughs> score. You know, I don't even, I don't even give my we don't students even, a we don't, even, we don't even round. That's an F plus, <laughs> right? Like I don't even like, give my students. Like, can we get on a curve at least? Like <laughs> my students don't even get a fifty eight percent on their on their their speeches and debates that they give. But so 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 we have we have this score. So what I'm saying is, uh, in my first term in these four years, we will get up ten points, hopefully more. But I, you know, I, I can guarantee you, we'll get from a fifty eight to a sixty eight. Sixty eight is still not a place of yeah. victory but it's it's progress and it's going the right direction and the way that we do that is we have excess money that's coming in through measure z which was a sales tax increase that was passed in 2016 by the majority of voters we're seeing more money year over year than we had anticipated and that money was never meant to sit there it was meant to be for public safety roads parks yeah. homelessness spend that money so extra 10 million a year each year will get us up be actually beyond the ten point threshold that I want to that I want to get us to, um, and, and and that I talk about that is the infrastructure. Well, because piece it affects the daily person. Yeah, right. Like I remember one time I was driving Reno Valley and I just sm- and I just smoked a pothole, blew yeah. out my tire, or whatever. Thank God I'm someone that can get it fixed mm-hmm. and pay for it and and it not ruin me. But if you're not that person, that can be livelihood like that can be everything which then now you don't have a car and yeah. that leads to not having a job and then that leads to being late and then rent and then and then, then it just spirals mm-hmm. it just spirals yeah and that's the thing that people like that small little thing can just you know what can waste no time no time because i gotta keep it tight give me my bag my bag my bag my bag i'm a price and the price mm. you know what can waste no time no time because i gotta keep it tight give me my bag my bag my bag my bag i'm a price and the price you know I can waste no time, no time, cause I gotta keep it tight. Give me the bass, give me the beat, I'm in my bag, this run is on me. Give me the bass, give me the beat, I'm in my bag, this run is on me. Give me the bass, give me the beat, I'm in my bag, this run is on me. Give me the bass, give me the beat, I'm in my bag, this run is on me. Well, and now it's, I mean, like we've been talking about our common thread here of this rain, rainy weather we're getting, all these, these storms that we have. That is, our roads, that will that hurts the roads so, oh, so much. Rain and water is the they worst thing those for cracks blacktop, and for just, asphalt. Dude. Yeah. So, we're, so we have some real bad potholes that are, that we already had some. Yeah. <laughs> but now we, have, now we have a lot more from this weather. And so for me, that's what, that infrastructure piece is important. And I tell you that when I go out knocking on doors, number one, yes, is homelessness. But number two to that is overall city services getting the trash picked up on time, getting the roads repaved, getting the parks cleaned up. And those are all things that we can do. That, yeah. And so that that's that I'm very forceful about because I know that is something I'm telling you, I can deliver on that. Yeah. Homelessness, there's more interlo- intertwining oh, that's state things. And money. I mean, we want to deliver on it, yeah. don't get me wrong, but there's more interlocking aspects of that. Infrastructure is yeah. pretty much all on our shoulders. How do you think you're gonna balance, like we talked earlier about how downtown, yeah. the east side for sure is way mm-hmm. different than the wood streets and downtown. How are you gonna balance handling three different style of wards or not wards but cities neighborhoods neighborhoods, neighborhoods yeah. and one ward yeah. like how do you how are you going to balance that stuff i mean I, I i go i go into this with with excitement i mean i'm prepared to do this i think it comes down to no matter how different these these four because we have four neighborhoods even two because even the north side is different from of course downtown, oh north side, side is different. yeah 100 yeah, so really these four neighborhoods how do you balance their needs and i look at despite how different they all may be what they all want is they want a council member who listens, who shows up, who responds, and who tries their hardest every day. And so that, I think, that's what I'm committed to. But we also know that the common thread there is the infrastructure piece, the the, the walkability, bikeability, cars being able to get around, all that's important. But but really, I, I'm very fortunate that I have support from community leaders in each of these neighborhoods who help as as mentors and as advisors on this. I mean, in the east side, Mary Figueroa is very prominent. She's uh, been a longtime supporter. She helps with a lot of, you know, saying, okay, well, here's a view of the east side, for example, uh, downtown. I mean, I live in downtown, but also have da- Ron Loveridge as a downtown leader, the Downtown Neighborhood Alliance, these different folks. Uh, Wood Street's the neighborhood I grew up in, have uh, leaders there that are supportive. The north side, uh, been very active with uh, the north side and specific the north plan. Side, if you kind of split north side in half, because you have the the new communities on the left, yeah. and then you kind of have the construction or the warehouses, and then and then the, well, depth so, of the older city. So that that Hunter Park area, that all was now moved to oh, to Ward so they Two. They moved that to Ward so that Two. Moved, so that was part of the switch there. So uh, that used to be in Ward One. Now that moved to Ward Two. So that's the more of the industrial part. So if you're thinking like um, you know kind of like Third and Spruce, Got Third, it. Columbia, a lot of that has now been moved over to Ward Two. But I think it comes down to you just need to be a council member who is 100% dedicated to this 
and working as hard as you can. And, and the rest of that will really sort itself yeah. out. So for you, are you guys, are you concerned about getting different businesses in downtown? Well, I mean, it's, I'm not, it, it is a focus of mine. I'm mm -hmm. not concerned in terms of I'm worried that they're yeah. not gonna come. I think that we are seeing uh, that people want to be in downtown Riverside for, I mean, everything from yeah. businesses to, to, to consumers. But I think what we have to do though is, you know, th th there's a saying that, um, that a mentor of mine says that you don't have to be sick to get better you know, we don't have to be on our deathbed yeah. to, to, to do better. And I think that we do have space to do better in the, in the business sphere for downtown Riverside specifically. Uh, a lot of that is I think that our downtown businesses in many cases just don't feel supported. Yeah, They don't feel supported from whether it be the city council, from city hall proper. Um, you know, we have a downtown uh, association that, that oh, downtown businesses involved in that, pay yeah. into. Uh, there's always room for improvement there. And so I think that we need a, a mixed bag approach. One is how are we attracting businesses to Ward 1, to Riverside, to downtown specifically based on the question you ask. But also we can't forget the businesses they that are currently here have, yeah. now. Yeah. And we have to do both. And so I think that really what that comes down to is ensuring safety, yeah. ensuring that there's access to um, you know programs and, and grants and these things that are important. But also the homelessness and crime is a big piece of that yeah. too. I think, you know, how you, I, I mentioned earlier my friend who had her window broken and I said, you know, how can I help? And she says, well, there's, there's two ways. One is in the short term in terms of, you know, making sure that I can get through all, any kind of necessary processes to get this replaced yeah, yeah. connections that can help with grant funds, all yeah. of that. But in the long term, the way that you help is stop this from happening. Yeah. And that's 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 a tough pill to swallow because that's that's a lot of weight on one person's shoulders when I don't have absolute control over it. But 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 she's right. She was right. And she is right. Is that you know changing the system to do is? I also think the issue is is people look at business owners as so rich, kind of like politicians, and so people don't understand like that two thousand dollar window is definitely something that's not calculated in that person's budget mm -hmm. and but they don't understand that like they think oh you know we're no business like yeah. same thing happens to me they're like yeah. oh you sell all these houses and you must have tons of money and blah blah, blah. it's like i still have four employees yeah. and i still have an office and i have all this overhead and i wasn't expecting this something to happen or mm -hmm. something to get stolen or yeah. whatever and it sucks i love that analogy adam because that actually there's a misconception there both in politics and in business yeah and you know people what they'll tell me is that you know oh you've you've only worked for city hall you're not a business owner so you don't know what it's like to be to own a business and to support business and i say i don't think that you have to have been a business owner to understand the challenges that people face and to be able to relate and to want to help them. I mean, when I was working in the mayor's office, I was an, in large part the, the go-to person for a lot of businesses in the downtown area because they couldn't get help in other places at City Hall. They knew if they got a hold of me, I would make, make things call. happen. Or make you know, call. I'd make yeah, things yeah. happen. Yeah. And um, yes, I mean, similar to how you know, business owners are not all rich, politicians are not all rich, people that are in government are not all rich. And uh, I think that there's, there's some mind expanding and learning that can be done there on both sides yeah and, and and to say that you don't know something because you've never done it doesn't if you if you have an open mind then then you'll learn or you'll have the right well, people and yeah. like there's a lot of stuff i don't know how to do that's why i have adrian i have no <laughs> idea how any of this works but then people will call me and be like hey dude i want to do a podcast yeah. how do you do and i'm like i have yeah. no idea call adrian he, yeah. I, i'm not smart enough to know but i know i'm smart enough to hire someone to do it i know? just i just my mind is not in that in those app i just don't see the world in those absolutes yeah. like that people just see it as if you've never owned a business you're not a business owner therefore you don't understand business if you've never done this therefore you can't do it i just my mind is not that closed mm -hmm. I just don't think like that, yeah. um, and and I think it's unfortunate when you people just do the, think like that. But you got to just put the right people around you. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's it's like oh, I was having a conversation with my employees yesterday, and she was like, "Well, I don't want to ride your coattails." I'm like, "Well, you better." And she's like, "What do you mean?" I go, "You're so broken." And she's like, "What do you mean?" I go, "I am riding people's coattails. <laughs> you should want to ride my coattails." I'm like, "You say that because in society that has been told to you that that mm -hmm. is a negative trait to ride mm -hmm. someone's coattails. It's not. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all doing." Yeah, the most successful people ride other people's well, coattails. Well, I always I look at too. You stand on people's shoulders to people that 100%. come before you. Yes, I mean, and and I you know people will say that you know um, because because I've you know worked for mayors or things yeah. like this that I therefore must have you know had it easier any of this stuff. I mean no, I mean I look at my my kind of life story. Just despite being a, a young person, I this kind of 
whole arc of my life even has been very different from many people my age. And I've been very fortunate where I have had mentors like Rusty yeah. Bailey and Ron Loveridge and all of them uh, that, that I've been able to, I stand on their shoulders because they helped me. Hopefully everyone has had someone, someone. who has helped them in their life. And, and, and I don't think that's a negative thing. We all need help, no matter which, whether you're in politics the or otherwise. The moment you realize that, is that is when you become successful. Mm -hmm. Everyone I know who is non-successful is always the person that goes, I wanna do this on my own. Mm -hmm. I don't need anyone's help. But I'm like, dude, I'm over here like, dude, I'll take anyone's I help know. that knows more than me. Well, and that's why, Adam, I said earlier, anyone that tells you I alone will solve fill in it's the impossible. blank is just, it's, it's just, it's Everything not. we do now is just the ability to communicate and, and to connect with people so we can all work together. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are, that is our job. Like we were actually having another meeting yesterday and she, one of my agents was like, we're here to fight. And like, we are not here to fight for our clients. She's like, what do you mean? I go, if I'm here to fight for my client, then they want this house, the seller wants to buy this house, okay. If I go in blazing, fighting, and I ruin the deal, did I solve the problem my client wanted, AKA this house? No, my job is to protect my client and to get the deal done. Mm -hmm. I said, you go in and blazing, same thing I think happens in politics, I'm here, you're a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I gotta go against you just because you have a D or an R on your mm -hmm. shirt. It's like, that's not the game. Like, it is to work together to the common good to get things done. Yeah. So we move the needle forward. But, but that but that takes some awareness of that if someone really wants to get things done. hundred percent. And that's what it comes down to. You know, I'm not I'm not running uh, to be on the city council to be, you know, the council member for the Democrats or the council member for the Republicans or the council member for people who, you know, love homeless people or hate homeless people, whatever it may be. I mean, there's all these extremes. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, you know, I'm running to be the council member who on day one can hit the ground running, which is what the people of Riverside and the residents of Ward 1 deserve, but also knowing that we have other council members up there and people always ask me this question, how are you gonna be able to work with them? I'm gonna say I'm gonna work with people that are very different sides of almost every coin. 100%. Um, I'm gonna work with them like I do everything else is that we find common ground. I always say you find common ground where you can find it, where you can't, you stand your ground, but odds are you can always find common ground on something. Yeah. And usually infrastructure is the most. Well, because if you don't agree with infrastructure, like, come on, dude. Like, I mean, we, we even saw that federally. Federally, you had a very divided Congress come to agreement on infrastructure. funding infrastructure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but. It's well, like, and I think it also helps, like, it helps, it just makes a community nicer yeah. and raises pricing. Like, no one wants to drive in an area that they don't feel like, it's the price. Like I care. I always tell people, no one cares about money. They're like, oh, I do. I'm like, you don't. You just want to feel like what you're paying for yeah. is what you're getting. Yeah. So like, I think that's a struggle that the Mark has in downtown. I don't know anyone that wants to pay four thousand dollars for a two bedroom apartment. I'm sorry. Like downtown is not worth four. I could go rent a house off Overlook for four thousand a yeah. month. Why would I get a two bedroom apartment? So it's like this balance of like providing so much value, then that increases everyone else's mm -hmm. livelihood. Mm -hmm. It just is what it is. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, I think that it comes down to you know, circling back to the downtown question. Yeah. You mentioned the market and all that. It comes down to making it where downtown is a place where people want to live and that they're getting quality. Mm -hmm. I think quality comes back to our city services and yeah. the city is upholding their end of the deal. Um, and, and, the, and the other aspect that we haven't really talked about yet, uh, it has to do though with business, is is jobs. So, so yes, so you have expensive housing <laughs> in many cases. We need to improve our city services. And then uh, how do you then have the jobs for people here that support all of that? Yeah. And what has really shocked me is that at the city level, we don't have you know, like a, our, our wish list. If we were to go, if we were to say, what are our top 10 businesses that we want to go after? Whether they're across California, the US, To whatever. bring them here, yeah. Yeah, who are, number one is, what are those top 10 businesses we're going after? Number two is, what are you going to offer them to come here? You can't just say, Riverside's a great place, come here. Yeah. We need more than that. Someone's given something. You got to do something. Yeah. And the final thing is, if, if the residents are not going to, if people that aren't working, for that business that's coming here, how do they benefit from them being yeah. here? What's the data that is it shows? Tax dollars? Yes, is it how are we going to benefit? So, and and usually it's just as simple as saying, you know, they're going to pay X number of tax dollars into our general fund, which will repave your yeah. road, get your trash picked up on time, all of that. But but that important groundwork we haven't done yet. Yeah. What are those businesses? What can we offer them? How are we going to benefit from them? We don't have that yet. We need to identify that. That's for me. That's like one. Of, that's one of the first things that we have to do. Because that's your roadmap. Yeah. We because then, because then, because something I've always noticed being here my whole life is like, it's how do we keep, we're such a big city, how do we keep the people from going to Orange mm -hmm. County in LA? That's really, I've always said, it's like, how do we keep the high quality people to work here and not go out there? Mm -hmm. Our top lawyers, doctors, whatever. Yeah. It's how do you keep them in this town? 
like they're leaving you I mean, even i think about the graduates come out of ucr and of course i because I, I teach in higher education i think in some in that mindset i mean cbu la sierra ucr even rcc they're leaving and they're they're going elsewhere looking for jobs because they can't find the jobs here. Yeah. And then I add another layer to it as well that we also need to be attracting businesses and, and, and sectors, uh, and a lot of this happens in green technology, where you have people at every level of the educational spectrum. For me, this is not just about masters and doctoral you know, folks. Yeah. Not just because you have a, you know, it's not about having an MA or a PhD behind your name. Those are important, don't get me wrong. I mean, and I, and I, and I work with a lot of those folks, but we also need to be looking at how are we having good quality jobs here for people that career technical education, associates, bachelors, or, or none of that yeah. too. I mean, that makes for a more robust economy. That again is part of that important groundwork. Well, I think every issue comes back to economics. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are and what you say, if you're, whatever city you live in if the, if if people are in there poor the crimes higher things like that are higher it's all economics mm -hmm. we just have to figure out ways for people to make more money and have good livings because you know like we do a podcast or a called 100k agent and people go like why that like what's 100 like i was mm -hmm. having lunch with a guy yesterday he's like what's 100 grand i'm like dude you know what people if you just ask Hey, what do you want to do when you get into real estate? I just want to make 100k mm -hmm. that's all i want to make i'm making 50k here working 40 hours a week i just want to make 100k mm -hmm. Most people don't have high levels of wanting mm -hmm. to make a million dollars a year. What they just want make good money, have a house, be able to do what they want to do on the weekends. Most yeah, people are very be, be comfortable too. So, like, so if you, want, you exactly. hit up pot, pothole, mess up your tire, you can afford to cover you can go. That. You can go fix it, and it's not breaking the bank. That's what most people want. That is what. It is. Mm -hmm. They just want to watch football on the weekends or whatever and have a good time. And not have me knock on their door bothering yeah, them exactly. when they're watching football, which yeah. is what I are do. You, are you, are you going to go on Sunday on the Super oh, Bowl? Oh, oh, no, no, not, not, no not, not on Super Bowl Sunday. I won't go. But there's a lot, been a lot of Sundays I've been knocking on doors and they're like, okay, just give me the information. Were you I'm watching scared? The game. Were you, like, I won't knock doors. Oh, um, I, I, love I hate it. it. Like, I'm so scared to knock doors because I feel like I'm bothering. I hate bothering people. Yeah. So for you, like, were, was there a fear factor to no. get over that? Well, but this is, I mean, this is what I've been doing for, I mean, for years. I mean, yeah. I, I knocked on doors. I mean, I've had so many friends that have run for office. Uh, Rusty Bailey, I knocked on doors for him. Steve Hemingway, the council member in Ward 7, knocked on doors for him. Of course, I ran previously in 2019, knocked on doors for myself. You want to come work Patricia for me? Lock Dawson. <laughs> I'm, well, uh, politics, I'll knock on doors for politics. But beyond that, I'm not doing it. But I always tell people, this is what it is. In the morning, when you wake up, on, and, and, I, and I go out knocking doors seven days a week, because I, I, teach, I teach morning classes at CBU, so I'm, most of my days are free. Now, at least, knock on doors seven days a week. In the morning, you're in bed, you're like, oh, I don't wanna go, I don't yeah, wanna yeah, go yeah. out there. I, I'll do anything to not, not get out there, it, just yeah. because it's, 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 it's a lot of work. It's both physically, but also very mentally draining, because- You're on. You're on, and also, I'm having the same conversation, probably 60 to 100 times yeah, a yeah, day. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a broken record. Yeah. And, um, and so I, I just don't want to go, but I guarantee you, well, maybe not you, Adam, because yeah. you said you don't like it, but, but I guarantee people, if you get out there and start doing it, yeah. it, it makes it to, that's like today. You, like I have three, I have you and then I have two more. Yeah. Like by tonight, You're I'll, be I'll be tired. Yeah. I'll be tired. Yeah. Like I'm forwarding all my calls to my yeah. assistant. It's yeah. like today, like that call, like, because it's like, you just start talking and you're yeah. on and you're thinking and you're having to connect and you have to interact and you have to do all these things. And it's like, dude, it's, it's hard. Well, and what everyone tells me say, Oh, Philip, you're young. You'll be fine. Said, it has, to me, it has, <laughs> it has, to me, to it has nothing to do with nothing age do because it. I'm talking about, I mean, physically I'll get tired from knocking on doors, but I'm usually, I'm on my feet all day. Yeah, yeah. I fast all day. That's oh, the whole, that's whole thing. I don't, I don't, I fast all One day. One meal a day? Um, yeah, in the evening. How long have you been doing it? Uh, well, mainly they, all my former coworkers make fun of me. I didn't do it out of on purpose. You I just, just did it. I just I'm too busy. I'm yeah. too busy to. And I if I'm going going going, I forget to eat and I don't think about it. Now it's kind of become a habit. And I was like, well, you know, it all. But usually I'll go. I mean, I don't eat breakfast. I don't eat lunch. I won't eat something probably until three yeah. or four o'clock in the afternoon. So, but it, it's not it's not so much the physical exhaustion. It's mentally exhausting. It's mentally. It's so it's so tiring. And but, that, but I love knocking on doors. So no, I, so it doesn't it doesn't phase me. <sighs> Bless your heart. Dude. You guys <laughs> call in or just knocking? Well, we're doing some calling, but really, I tell you. Not knocking on doors, at least in this space. I can't speak for other sectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where it is won. Yeah, I mean, uh, going face to face. It is, yeah. and people need because you know they'll get a mailer from me, or they'll get a text from me, or even someone on the phone, and they'll be like, "Yeah, I don't know," but me at their door, hearing me, you know, real, them realizing I'm not some yeah, yeah. crazy evil person who worked in city hall and wants to destroy their lives. Yeah. It, that's ridiculous. It's I'm I'm an everyday Riversider who lives in this community, who loves this community because of all that they gave to my family and want to pay that back. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, that resonates with people. Yeah. Do you have goals after? After 
right right now is win the city council okay. seat um I, as i mean as i said i'm i'm not going to run for the city council seat more than two terms i'm not going to i'm not going to be on the city council when i'm you know 80 I hope, years old i hope you know if you go for 3 I'm, I'm gonna clip this no, and give it to ever. Come give after it to me. Ever. Come after me. Hold me accountable. Adrian, no. if he goes for two, I'm moving to downtown Riverside. I'm running against him, and this is gonna be my ad. No, you're not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna be running for this seat more than two terms. Yeah. Um, I just don't. I don't think that's where someone should should you should because park you get it. you get you get locked in. Well, yeah, and it's and just. It's just it's and just, also too, there's so many things in life that I want to do. And too. no offense, you're only making sixty k. Well, so it's there's, not there's, like, so oh, it's not oh, you're like, being generous. You give well, me a raise. I know. Well, <laughs> well, I'm hoping they give you something. But like, you know what I mean. So it's not like yeah. you're hanging in for that. Yeah. You know. So, but but beyond that, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's so many things that I love. I, I love historic preservation, conservation, environmental causes. I always say, you know, for me, uh, Department of the Interior, which oversees all of the, the the country's national parks and historic locations, I'm really passionate about that. So, I would love to work in that space at one point. Um, so, I don't know. Would but you ever run for mayor? Depends. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not opposed to it, yeah. but I also I am 100% committed to our current mayor, who yeah. has been a wonderful friend and mentor of mine for years. Um, so I want her to stay and do her thing. I think that she needs people in the city council who are rowing in the same direction. People don't realize in this town, the mayor does not hire and fire people. The mayor does not go in there, you know, screaming, shouting, demanding things. That's not how it works in Riverside. It's yeah. different from other cities, and people don't. Either they don't know that or they don't want to know that. I don't they even see, think they know that how it works in other cities. Well, well, but they look at, they see the yeah. mayor of LA and the mayor yeah. of San Diego and the mayor of San Francisco, and they are the CEO. Mm -hmm. They call all the shots. That's not how our government is structured here. And I always say, I want to teach a class, Riverside Government at RCC. If anyone from RCC is, let, you know, yeah, we'll listen, send, come on. Chop it up. We'll send it up. Yeah. Give me, give me a class there. Or even um, high school. It should be in high yeah. school. I know. Well, Rusty Bailey's teaching at Poly. I should tell Rusty to insert. That oh, is he in back his, at Poly? He's now? back at Poly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but but you know, you really we have a we have a good mayor. We have a great mayor who needs to stay there. But she needs a council who's rowing in yeah. the same direction. So my main focus is, is city council right now. Oh, yeah. we, we need to. We need You've to. You've been helping her out on her her, her rerunning a, a little bit here yeah. and there. I mean, I, I, a good friend of mine who has been in politics and who doesn't isn't in it anymore but they said when you're a candidate you got to be selfish for sure and so um you know i'm all in for patricia lock dawson i'm happy to 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 help her in any way but the flip side is too i have my own race in front of me i'm <laughs> yeah. sorry but i gotta but be I selfish here yeah, too yeah. you know um so so i help her where i can but really my main focus is is getting myself elected yeah. which is i think that's the best service I to work the, on the, i think in all of it to be honest like i just don't know if people are hitting the digital space enough in our in our elections you know, like I, I don't really see her posting that much. I've seen, I know a few people are running against her. I don't really yeah. see them post that much. I know a few people running against you. I yeah. don't see that post that much. It's like, I think nowadays it's like the digital space is like just. Well, actually that's how, that's how we won Patricia's campaign last time because you have to think she was, it was. Uh, Who is she, she going against? March. She March, well, when she ran previously, yeah. it was Andy, her and Andy, she and Andy Melendres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Melendres was the Ward 2 council member, had been on the city council for, for a while. Um, and, but this was COVID. I think this, this was you had to do everything digital, yeah. So we did. We moved to social media. I mean, and that was actually one of the spaces that I. One of the things I I ran for her is that. I mean, our social media following just really exploded during that time, um, because you had no other choice. We had no other choice. Yeah. Uh, now it's a little bit different. We cannot be out there knocking on doors and things like that. Um, I, I'm doing a lot on social media, but I I, I still am it's a little more old school in terms of knocking on doors, uh, yeah. despite my youth. How old uh, are you? Uh, 27 years old. Does, so Has anyone get brought that up? Yeah, they bring it up and they like to say this, that, or the other. And I say, you know, I, I look young, I look younger than I am. But at the end of the day, I think when you look at the demographics of Ward 1, our largest demographic is 18 to 35. I'm right smack dab in the center mm -hmm. of that. Uh, we've had, we have council members who came on the council when they were 28, when they were 30, when they were 32. Mm -hmm. The, there's two other candidates in my race who one's 29, one's early 30s. It's like don't don't tell me that. Oh my gosh, you know, five six years is just so consequential that we're gonna we're gonna lose our minds if someone is you know. Th I just don't buy that it's, stuff. Isn't it crazy? It, ha it happens to me. That's, that's the reason I don't shave my face. Because if I shave my face, I look like I'm like I'm 36. I look like 26. <laughs> and like I've walked in a lot of people's houses and they're like, "How old are you?" Yeah. And like when I first started, I was like, oh, "I'm 30," and they're like. So I'm going to trust you with this and you're 30 years old, but this guy's 60. And then I, then you have to like yeah. come so much. I think, I think for people like us, we have to go so much harder in our experience yeah. and like sell so much harder that it's like, dude, I've earned this. Like, well, I tell people I will appreciate my face in 40 years, but I don't appreciate it right now. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. That's what I always tell people because that's kind of what it comes down to. But I really think though, 
at the end of the day, and this is why I like knocking on doors so much too, is that I tell people, you can look at my picture on social media or you can look at you know, uh, the, the number in terms of my age and you can make your own conclusions. But, and that's easy, that's yeah. cheap. But what's more difficult is let's have these conversations and talk about the issues. And I guarantee you, I know more about the issues than any other candidate, no matter their age. Well, you have the experience. Well, and that's what's important. Yeah, you have experience. And so, so I, so and the I don't age think people, thing, the age thing is what the people yeah, use as a distraction. I don't think people process how government works. You know what I mean? And if you've never been in the space, it's going to take that person some learning curve oh, to yeah. understand what how the game is played. Well, yeah, well, I, I say I say on day one. You know, I'm the only candidate who actually know where their office is, yeah. know where the bathroom is at City Hall, know who the who the, the head of public works is. And the, they know the you. Support. Yes. Yeah. These relationships are important. And for people just to say, uh, you know, it's all bad or it's all irrelevant or, or yeah. City Hall is messed up as it is. Yeah. I just think that just they're not they're not living in the, the in a world that is focused on getting stuff done for yeah. the residents. And so I always I usually wrap up all my stuff by saying this job is too important to your day to day quality of life to settle don't settle for someone who doesn't know anything about government who has never had any interest in serving before because it's going to take them time we don't have a year to waste on yeah, exactly. this learning curve and then you're going to have and then a year a few years later you're going to rerun yeah, exactly you have you have a, a year, year to learn a year to learn maybe you can get a year of, of actual work in there and then you're focused on you're focused on re-election yeah it's it's i just i just don't subscribe to that awesome man awesome well what do you want to leave people on well i just think that it comes down to you know that you know the voter turnout usually for city council is so low yeah Let's, let's change that. I mean, vote. It's all vote by mail. It's so easy. Uh, it's so simple. And uh, I'll let you complain if you vote. But if you don't, if you don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't vote, you shouldn't complain. And you know what? If you get his mailer, it's his cell phone number, everyone. And that's my, my so cell phone, everything. So if you have an issue, you can call me. Call me directly and yeah. don't be surprised when I actually answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I think it comes down to that, you know, this is so important. Yeah. If you care about this city and you are frustrated that your trash isn't being picked up on time, you're hitting a pothole every 10 feet and you want that changed, you got to elect someone who knows how to pull those levers to make those yeah. things happen. And, and that's and that's what I bring to the table. Awesome, guys. Awesome. Well, make sure you go out and vote. Whoever you vote for, voting is the only way you can ever yep. complain. And March 5 is the last day to do it. March 5. Does, does that mean they have to mail in by March 5 or it has to be in by March 5? They, they, they can, it can be postmarked by March 5. So like if they take it to the post office on March 5, they, that's good. I tell people, though, if you're going there to the post office, you might as well just go to City Hall and drop, drop it in the it Dropbox. That's, that'll get to, so the, you can do it where right it needs away. to be faster. And then when do we find out the results? Well, it depend, as soon as that night, uh, you kind of see the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. But usually they, they actually um, verify the election within uh, 10 to 14 days You going to throw a party after. or what? Oh, well, we do election night party, of course, of course. you know, um, and okay. then, and we'll, you know, usually we're all on pins and needles seeing what happens. And in this case, we'll be looking at everything, mm -hmm. city council, mayor, county supervisor, There's state assembly. There's a lot assembly, going on right now. We'll be watching it all. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. So make awesome. sure you go out and vote. Thanks, Adam. If you have any questions, reach out to him. If you live in Ward 1, if you have any questions about what's going on in him, reach out to him and uh, make sure you go vote. Until next time, guys, peace. Awesome. Thank you.